that is embarrassing. NASA is once again pushing one of its key programs, the Mars sample return to the brink. Like many of their other projects, this mission costs significantly more to complete and takes longer to launch than initially promised. So, in this era of constrained federal budgets, the space agency has to call private companies for help, typically SpaceX, to deliver projects on time and within budget. One more piece of evidence for NASA's spokesperson Bill Nelson to admit that the NASA's era is over now, SpaceX is walking over them in any way. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. Despite being considered an ambitious, multi-mission campaign between NASA and the European Space Agency, the Mars Sample Return, or MSR, has been frozen for virtually one year, and problems have begun to arise since when serious work began in early 2021. Until now, the unacceptable rising cost that the mission is facing is up to $11 billion, more than NASA spent to build the James Webb Space Telescope, and a timeline to bring the precious payload home has slipped to 2040. For NASA Chief Bill Nelson, that wait is too long, and the expensive price of up to $11 billion can totally be able to blow the mission away. Mars Sample Return's goal was to land the Perseverance rover on Mars, collect samples of scientific interest from a location that could have hosted life, and return them to Earth. The first part of the mission is underway, with the Perseverance rover currently trundling around the 28-mile-wide Jezero crater, thought to have contained an ancient lake that dried up 3.8 billion years ago, with some two dozen samples in tow. The next phase of the mission was supposed to have launched by 2031, collecting those samples from Perseverance and launching them back to Earth on a European-built spacecraft in 2033. In September 2023, however, an independent review found that goal was unachievable, given delays and cost overruns in the program. Nelson said a major reason for the ballooning cost was a billion-dollar hit to NASA's science budget that was part of a congressional deal to secure funding for the debt ceiling. NASA received $310 million for the sample return mission in the agency's fiscal 2024 budget and plans to ask for just $200 million in the FY25 budget request while mission options are explored. Unlike what we often think, NASA only receives a small amount of funding from the annual federal budget passed by the U.S. Congress. NASA's budget is just around 0.4% to 0.5% of the total U.S. federal budget. This means that for every dollar spent by the U.S. government, about half a cent goes to NASA. Of course, the angel of salvation in this case is always private companies with innovative designs to revive the mission. NASA is asking those firms to put forward ideas for how to carry out the mission at a lower cost and in a shorter time frame. The agency is seeking short proposals by May and will then make a decision this summer on which ideas to carry forward with full proposals then expected by the fall. NASA might be soliciting ideas with one specific vehicle in mind, SpaceX's massive new Starship rocket with the infrastructure built for Artemis. That could provide MSR with a whopper of a solution. NASA is already funding Starship, the largest rocket in history, to the tune of billions of dollars to ferry astronauts to the lunar surface. But Starship also has the potential to launch immense payloads off other worlds and back to Earth. Starship's planned heavy lift capabilities are so immense, in fact, that the rocket could immediately simplify MSR. Perseverance could probably roll into Starship and fly back to Earth. If anything, the sample return will expand in scope because of Starship payload capacity. In terms of cost, it's probably the only thing that could possibly go within the budget. And that's only because SpaceX already wants to go there and will even foot the majority of the bill. It's a bit different from HLS since SpaceX is not interested much in the moon, so HLS is just looking for new sources of revenue, plus maybe some testing of Starship on the moon. But Mars is the reason SpaceX exists and transportation to and from Mars is what Starship is designed for, so it's a much more natural fit here than HLS. I was not surprised as Elon Musk accepted this requirement in a tweet on April 15 in response to NASA's MSR solicitation. Starship has the potential to return serious tonnage from Mars within about five years. However, many views suggest that conducting a program like the Mars Sample Return is not sustainable in the long term unless the space agency can find a way to solve completely their persistent problems related to budget and delay. 
I'm pretty sure that NASA has repeatedly come up with the idea of collaborating with SpaceX as part of the Mars colonization mission to utilize the great power of SpaceX's mammoth rocket and share the burden of cost. So, in that context, how will the plan take place? In the dawn of Mars colonization, we would immediately bring a fully automated lab with its capacity to Mars by Starship. Currently, the analytical lab on Mars is an advanced analytical laboratory called the Sample Caching System and the Mars Oxygen in Situ Resource Utilization Experiment or MOXIE carried by the Perseverance rover. The Sample Caching System is designed to collect and store rock and soil samples that might provide evidence of past life on Mars. These samples are returned to Earth by the missions for detailed analysis by scientists. MOXIE, on the other hand, is an experiment aimed at demonstrating a way to produce oxygen from the Martian atmosphere, which could be crucial for future human missions to Mars. While Perseverance and previous rovers have revolutionized our understanding of Mars, we are really at the point for human explorers slash scientists to take our knowledge of Mars, a whole new world, to the next level. According to Richard Davis, the Assistant Director for Science and Exploration at NASA headquarters, such missions would require a semi-permanent laboratory on Mars, and while NASA hasn't yet revealed exactly what that lab would look like, Davis says it will probably be similar in size and appearance to the lab module on board the International Space Station, with up to four researchers able to work at the same time. As far as exact location, he adds that, in October 2015, NASA started the selection process for the site of a human base slash research station on Mars with 47 possible landing sites in the running. We are looking for a semi-permanent base where we can accomplish outstanding diverse science and where we can have access to the resources needed to sustain our crews, Davis explains. Ultimately, we will need much more reconnaissance to actually pick a site but there is strong consensus that we can, in fact, find a site with both excellent science opportunities and needed resources. As far as how long scientists would be working on Mars, Davis says the typical manned missions are planned to be 1,000 to 1,100 days long, or roughly three years, with seven months required to get to Mars and another seven required to get back, leaving them in the Martian system for about 22 months. Initial missions to the surface may be short stays to learn to live and operate in this new world. Along with that, SpaceX's Starship will accelerate its flight cadence to transport the raw materials for building up infrastructure to allow people to live and work there. After completing their mission, the crew would then return to orbit, rendezvous with their Mars transfer vehicle, and wait for their return opportunity. Eventually, though, the goal is to spend the full 22 months on the surface, researching and exploring. NASA is also just beginning the process of deciding which scientific instruments and equipment a manned lab on Mars would be outfitted with. As estimated, a fully outfitted lab just requires about 20 metric tons of instruments. Even with additional laboratory racks and individual experiments, it does not matter with Starship's payload capacity. With the range of payload capacity between 100-200 tons to orbit, only a launch is capable of carrying both full a fleet of astronauts, scientists, and the needed cargo. It's an extremely clever and low-cost solution for the Red Planet futuristic missions. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.